Good morning and welcome to Holocaust Memorial Day 2021. You may have noticed a slight change to our usual surroundings, but nonetheless, it does not deflect the importance of why we are here. We must ensure that stories continue to be shared and that the world never forgets that we never forget. Here in North Tyneside, we will continue to remember the importance of this annual commemoration. Every year, we hear some incredibly moving stories and I am sure this year will be no different. We continue to have the support of the children from our local schools and I very much look forward to seeing their contribution on this year's theme, Be the Light in the Darkness. Thank you for attending this virtual event and to all those who made this possible. Without the hard work of our Holocaust Memorial Day working group, along with our media team, this event would not have been possible today. Particular thanks to Rabbi Lipsy, our young mayor, Susie McKenzie, and keynote speaker, Trevor Avery. Thank you and stay safe. May I warmly welcome you all to our virtual Holocaust Memorial Day commemorative event for 2021. In what, as you would agree, are unusual circumstances, as we would normally meet in our council chamber at the quadrant. We use this time to reflect upon what we can learn from the past, and I'm grateful that you are here sharing with us today's event after the strange and challenging months we've all experienced, not just locally, but globally. We, at this event, remember how after the horrors of war, society and communities were rebuilt, and how we tried to learn from our experiences, and this too is where we are at with our recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm sure that we can learn from recent events and not just return to normal life, but build a better life for all. With that in mind, I'm pleased to welcome all of our contributors to today's presentation. And I'm sure that we will all hear a lot about what they've learned from looking back at through history and the impact of the Holocaust, as well as other genocides. May I welcome Councillor Muriel Green, Chair of the Holocaust Memorial Group, to host this event. My thanks to elected Mayor Norma Redfern for that welcome. And may I also extend my thanks to Councillor Wendy Lott, the Chair of North Tyneside Council. And to all of our special guests today are very important people for supporting this important annual commemorative event. And may I offer a very warm welcome to them. The theme of this year's event is Be the Light in the Darkness. The aftermath of the Holocaust and of subsequent genocide continues to raise challenging questions for individuals, communities and nations. Be the Light in the Darkness encourages audience to reflect on how we must all come together and stand up for the rights of people, not to be bullied, oppressed and exploited. How we must be that light of hope and help and strive to remove people's inhumanity to others. On Holocaust Memorial Day 2021, we will reflect on what happens when individuals, families and communities are threatened by oppressors with persecution or genocide, alongside the continuing difficulties survivors face as they try to find and build new lives when the genocide is over. Today, we are remembering those who were forced to live through these experiences. We honour those communities who were destroyed during the Holocaust under the persecution from the Nazis. And we also remember those who have suffered in subsequent genocides in Cambodia, in Bosnia, Rwanda, Darfur, and more recently, from the ongoing conflict in Syria. Holocaust Memorial Day enables us to reflect on the lessons of the past and the present, and most importantly, make a commitment for the future. I'd now like to invite Rabbi Aaron Lipsy to address our guests and share with us a few words about this event, as he does every year, as well as share a prayer with us. I now say the memorial prayer 
in English and then in Hebrew. Almighty God, full of mercy who dwells on high, provide a sure rest upon the wings of the divine presence within the levels of the holy and the pure whose countenance shines like the sky. The souls of the six million Jews who were murdered, slaughtered, burnt and exterminated for the sanctification of your name by the Nazi assassins and their collaborators. Let the Garden of Eden be their repose. May the Master of Mercy protect them forever in the protective shelter of his wings and bind their souls with the bond of life. Hashem is their heritage and they shall rest peacefully where they fell. And let us say, Amen. Kel mole rachamim, shoychein bamaroimim, ham and say manuchanachain, al kanfe ashkina, bamalois kadoishim, uta hoirim, kazoi har, horokia mazirim, es nishmois, hashishim ribu yudim, shenehergu, vishenishrutu, vishenisrufu, Vishenisufu al kidush Hashem. Began a den temu nuchasam. Lochain balorachamim. Yasti rain beses a knof of lelamim. Vyitzroer bitzroer a chayim is nishmaisem. Hashemunachalosam. Vyonuchu vishaloim al mishkovam. Vinoimar. Amen. Once again, a thought provoking contribution from Rabbi Lipsy and a very sincere thank you from everyone. I'd now like to welcome our first presentation from the pupils of Carbell Primary School to present to us some of their work that they've been preparing over the last term. Six pupils from Carbell Primary School in Wolves End. The theme for Holocaust Memorial Day 2021 is Be the Light in the Darkness. Where creative black outcomes spread messages of hope and light. Be the Be be the light in the darkness by Yasser. Be the light in the darkness. Communities and individuals stand up. Sh share the light, encourage remembrance. Bring us confidence, makes us feel valued. We are hope, safety. The light offers us joy, warmth, and comfort. No one petrified. Unleash the light. Genocide deliberate. Six million people brutally killed. Communities and individuals stand up. Share the light. Sh shine your, shine their light to those suffering. End discrimination for the freedom of others. Celebrate, save, protect, resist, be responsible. In support we remember in the hope of a brighter future. Rise up out of the darkness and stand for thrice. Courageous, remarkable individuals chose the side of the light. Join us by taking action. Choose to be the light in the darkness. We talked about how the dark and the light can make us feel. The darkness makes us feel alone, like we have nobody to talk to. The light brings us confidence and makes us feel valued. In the dark we are helpless, in the light there is hope. The darkness makes us feel valued. The darkness makes us fear for our safety while the light offers joy, warmth and comfort. No one should have to feel petrified in the dark. We should unleash the light. We learnt about some of the remarkable individuals who stood up against the Nazi persecution of the Jews. Individuals like Karl Lutz who fought through the darkness for the freedom of others. He is celebrated for saving the Budapest Jewish population from the Holocaust. Karl used paper, not weapons, to fight the Nazis. As thousands of Jews were forced to walk to concentration camps in Austria and Germany, Karl saved as many people as he could by giving them protective documents. Lutz is an example of the light in the darkness. Johann van Holst was a Dutch teacher who resisted the Nazis by smuggling Jewish children out of Amsterdam. From 1942 to 1943, Johann arranged the transport of Jewish children. They were hidden, terrified and innocent in baskets and sacks. Discriminated against because of their religion. Along with his colleagues, Johann is responsible for the rescue of over 600 children. Karl Lutz and Johann van Holst are only some of the remarkable individuals who chose the side of the light. We create acrylic paintings to show how an individual can spread their light and positivity. We can choose to be the light in the darkness. Everyone has to play a part. We are Carville Primary School. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you very much indeed, Carville Primary School, for opening the events for this year. I'd like to thank every one of you for your work. And I think we all agree that you've clearly thought about the issues 
and experiences that war and conflict cause and the impact they have upon us all. I'd now like to introduce the pupils from Bunkhouse Primary who in year five have been looking at a book called The Boy at the Back of the Class. At Monkhouse Primary in Year 5 we have been learning about the Holocaust and we were horrified when we realised that darkness still exists today in the form of injustice. We could clearly see how prejudice and hostility still occurs around the world. Our class text, The Boy at the Back of the Class, which was written two years ago, tells the story of a young refugee boy who has to flee his country due to war. In this story, he experiences pain, suffering, loss, racism, as well as generosity and kindness. We have written diary entries from his perspective to enable people to walk in someone else's shoes and step out of their comfort zones, because experiences like this should not be ignored or forgotten. Dear Diary, today is the first time when I have really had the chance to digest what has been happening to me in the last few months. It all started when my life was extremely wonderful. I was the happiest child on the planet. Then overnight my life had suddenly turned into a tragedy. First I woke up to bombs dropping, guns firing and people yelling like angry commanders. It was a painful sight, so my mum and dad held me tight. It made me feel a little bit safer. That morning, the journey that I took was never-ending. I could not feel my feet full of blisters as we travelled across the Himalayas. We travelled across dangerous seas with unknown species of creatures. The raging sea took my beloved sister to its depths. After endless days, I found myself in a calm, safe place, but sadly my family were no longer with me. Now I had found myself in a new school where all the children are brilliant, except for five bullies. Thankfully, they no longer bully me and my friends. They were my light in the times of darkness. As you can see that even in the times of despair, generally people will come to help one another. It shows that even in the dark, in darkness it is possible to create light let's keep retelling these stories for the whispers will turn into loud voices and therefore will never be ignored or forgotten well that was a change wasn't it from monkhouse primary the boy at the back of the class many thanks to the pupils for their engaging and thought-provoking interpretation around this year's theme. It fitted in very nicely. Thank you, Munkhouse. This year, we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, every year we have a song which is written for us by a local songwriter and pupils from one or two of the schools perform for us. And we have a CD which has uh, been collated of the, the, the songs for the last few years which people can actually purchase if they wish. But this year we've got a special one-off virtual HMD youth choir and I'm sure you've seen some of the choirs on television. The pupils from a wide variety of North Tyneside schools will now sing Refuge, which was one of the songs which was recommended by the National Holocaust Memorial Day Working Group.
I'm sure you'll agree with me that the, the words from the song are very moving. The children and staff team have done an amazing job here and we'll get a chance to hear the words again later in the programme. Our special thanks are offered to the music team for their contribution. As you would imagine, to undertake the coordination of a task such as a virtual choir is not easy. May I offer our sincere gratitude to the efforts of all involved with this presentation. I'd now like to introduce students from Whitley Bay High School. They come annually and they always do us proud. I think the Holocaust is really important to teach because it shows how quickly democracy can crumble and how easily people can be manipulated to not necessarily doing the wrong thing but just turning a blind eye to things that are going on. Um, I think it's important to remember the Holocaust because it's to commemorate people who survived the Holocaust. Teaches about us about equality and about respecting everyone for who they are and not discriminating against people just because of their religion or the way they look. I feel that it teaches us to take responsibility for our actions and not to just shift the blame onto another group of people. Um, I think there was just there was such suffering involved and such hatred and such evil actions involved that we can't just forget about it and it's it's so important for us as a society. It allows us uh, to learn more about prejudice and intolerance and how easy that is to happen and that's something that we can still see today in our modern world. So I think it's important so we can stop the systematic anti-Semitism in our community and we can stop the constant racism. It's also important that we learn to not use mass massacres, including mass anti-Semitism and also racism against other people. Well, the Holocaust is probably one of the most horrific events in the, most, in the last century of human history. Very much up there is probably the most horrific event that ever happened in human history, full stop. But we need to learn about it. It is horrific that it happened in the first place, but if we never learn from our mistakes and never learn to regret and see how horrible it was, we could risk it happening again and that just cannot happen because it was such a horrible event. Um, I think it's important that we learn about it so that we can acknowledge that it happened and that it was wrong and we can build off it as like people in a society. Um, it teaches us that people can be cruel to like, an extent and that it shouldn't have happened and that um, that idea of it shouldn't be happened and people can be evil, can change society. Teaching about the Holocaust is really important so that it never ever happens again. Because the liberation of Auschwitz and the end of the Holocaust was 75 years ago, many survivors are unfortunately no longer with us. So it's really important that we teach their stories, their stories of their families and what happened to them, so we never ever forget what happened and ensure that it never happens again. Once again, our sincere thanks to the pupils and staff from Whitley Bay High School for this contribution and the continued support we've had from this school over many years. I'm now delighted to introduce and welcome our guest speaker for this year, Mr. Trevor Avery. Trevor's going to tell us about the work he's involved with in sharing the important messages we want to convey and a unique project he curates in the Lake District. My name is Trevor Avery and I'm the director of the Lake District Holocaust Project. I'm talking to you today um, through the miracles of modern technology, if you like, from Windermere um, in the heart of the Lake District. Now, until a number of years ago, it was an extraordinary thought for anybody to be thinking of having a Holocaust commemoration project in the Lake District of England. The Lake District of William Wordsworth, of John Ruskin, of Beatrix Potter. But here we are with a remarkable connection between 300 children and young people who had survived the Holocaust, had actually been in the concentration camps 
lost all their families on their journey that had happened throughout the previous few years before they were liberated in Theresienstadt in the Czech Republic and then on August the 14th 1945 300 of them were flown to Carlisle to Crosby on Eden Airport now Carlisle International Airport and from there they were brought on buses and different kinds of transport brought to a place called Calgarth Estate which stood very near Windermere village. Calgarth Estate itself stood very near to what was said to be the largest single span building at the time in Britain. It was a flying boat factory, the short Sunderland flying boat factory at White Cross Bay. And Calgarth Estate had been built to house the workers and the families who came from throughout the United Kingdom to work at this factory, a very, very top secret installation during the war. Calgath Estate had 200 houses, homes for families, men and women to come and work in the factory, but it also crucially had what we know as hostels. These were buildings that could have people with little rooms, little beds, little dressing tables, and there were six of them that could house 50 in each. And it was these hostels at the heart of Calgath Estate where our children would come or would stay. Their journey would begin in Prague and after a seven or eight hour flight, they would find themselves in a place that they didn't know. In fact, the journey was so incredible for them Although they had been asked and they'd volunteered, yes, they would come to England, yes, they would come to this place. Remember, none of them could speak English, very few could speak English, but they could speak many, many different languages. They didn't know where the Lake District was. In fact, many of them thought they'd landed in Holland or Ireland. It was a, it was a strange journey for them. Many of them arrived in the dead of night in the early hours, so they didn't actually see where they'd come until the following morning. The following morning they awoke into bright, bright sunshine. This was their light after the darkness. The Lake District in itself, just a matter of two, three hundred years before, had actually been a place of darkness until William Wordsworth and the Romantics said it was a place to come, to recover, to the sublime. It actually had been a place of darkness and people were afraid to come. People didn't, they avoided the Lake District, they avoided the mountains and the lakes, they were a place of darkness. But through a transformation process of which Wordsworth was at the forefront, but by no means the only poet and artist to do that, it changed. It changed its meaning for the country and it became a beacon throughout the world, a place for rest and recuperation from modern life. And that was exactly what its role was for these children. When they had been liberated, the Central British Fund, the organisation that was to look after them, as how to care for them, they had to decide where to bring them. And much discussion had, had gone on, should we take them to, to London? Manchester, where should we bring them? And we decided that we would bring them to the Lake District. They couldn't have come to a better place. And I say that not as somebody proud to live here or near here, but I say that because the guys, the children, the survivors say that themselves. They describe their journey, their arrival here as coming from hell to paradise. Ruskin sublime. What's interesting, when you do talk to them, and I've been friends with many of them, I've known many of these children and survivors for many, many years. And when you talk to them, you find out that their conversation, their description of their time in Windermere, the Lake District, is littered with colours, the brightness of the colours. If you think that, that light, is, is there's a spectrum of bright colours that form the light that we see every day all around us, how we see things. 
The one I, that springs to mind immediately is, is, is a good, close friend of mine, Ike Alterman, lives in Manchester, and Ike, known for many, many years. And Ike described landing at Croydon Eden Airfield and being taken into an aircraft hangar there, where their details, their names and addresses, where they were checked in, in a sense. And he remembers walking into the hangar and his description to me was like, Trevor, it was like Technicolor. What he was talking about, which sounds extraordinary to us, but we haven't lived through the privations that he had. He was talking about white bread. He was talking about the redness of the jam in the bread. He was talking about cups of tea, but not any cups of tea, cups of tea with milk in. He said it was extraordinary, the colours, the bright, bright colours. He said we hadn't seen this for years, these colours. Another dear friend of mine, Maya Hirsch, a remarkable journey, they all had remarkable journeys. Maya Hirsch, for a journey, had survived 18 months in Auschwitz-Birkenau when it was at its peak as a killing machine. But Maya had lived and survived all that. And he remembers, as others do, the intense green colours when he came to the Lake District. Green everywhere. And I said to him, how did it feel when you arrived? He said, oh, it was the intensity of the green. But he said, in comparison, he said, it makes me think of people who visit Auschwitz today, which is a memorial. He said, when you go today, there are green fields everywhere, there's lawns, it's looked after, it's well kept. And he said, when I was there, there was no green. If there was a single blade of grass, we would take it from the ground and we would eat it. So what you see of Auschwitz today, inevitably, is not the Auschwitz that Maya lived through. He lived at the heart of the extermination process. He saw the transports arriving at what they call the ramp. He saw the victims coming from the trains. He saw a select few coming into the camp with him as a work detail. And he saw most of them walking into the distance towards the gas chambers. And then he remembers the smoke from the chimneys. I don't say this to distress you, I don't say this, you know, in any sense of, of, of kind of to get across, to upset you, disturb you. I say this because Maya was there in January 1945, he was liberated in May, he had another journey after Auschwitz. So you can imagine the changing circumstances for Maya and Ike and friends like Sam and Jack and Ben, and Harry, and Harry, and Minia, and so many others. They came from that darkness into the brightness of the Lake District. And it seems William Wordsworth was not only doing the people of his time, in the late 18th century, 19th century, a great service in turning the late district to a, into a place of lightness, a place to re relax and recuperate. Little did he know, he was setting it up for these remarkable children. Professor Tony Kushner at Southampton University came here many, many years ago and we were trying to decide how what is this irresistible connection between the Lake District and the Holocaust? What what was it that was so that seen it turned into a film drama, The Windermere Children, into a into a documentary seen around the world, The Windermere Children in their own words. It has seen this little project, this little patch of land in Britain, in England. It has seen it mentioned in the great institutions of the world. The United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, 
Yad Vashem, Beth Shalom, Buckingham Palace. What is it about it? And he said to me, I think I have it. It's the coming together of two epics. There is the epic landscape and the epic sweep of Romanticism. And it's come together with the epic tragedy of the Holocaust. And they co-joined together in that summer and autumn of 1945. It wasn't just the landscape, although it made a huge impact on them. It was the clean sheets, the plentiful amount of food, the, the sheer exuberance of being here. They'll say that. They said they woke up on the first morning, Sir Ben Health got said, when I woke up next morning at Calgarth Estate, here in Windermere, he said, I was effervescent, they couldn't stop me talking. I couldn't believe what I was seeing around me. Mountains, lakes, it was incredible, and food. We took as much food as we possibly could and they had to say, wait a minute, we'll show you, you don't need to. You don't need to worry about where food is gonna come from. And they took them to the larders and the pantries and said, look, there's plenty. You'll never go short again. Of course, they could see that, but it took an awfully long time for them to actually believe it. Some for the rest of their lives. So you can see the connection. You can see the, the colours, the bright light. Alfred Huberman, another boy, he remembers coming in, remembers the rhododendron, the colours of the rhododendrons. Minia J, wonderful Minia, who survived a selection in front of Mengele. Minia was a wonderful friend of ours. She came to the list district about five years ago. She arrived at Lake School, which stands on the site of where Calgary Estate was. And I hadn't met her before. We communicated on the phone, but I'd never met her face to face. And she stepped over to me and she said, Trevor, let's go for a walk. And she took me by the arm and we walked through these playing fields. Very, very ordinary school playing fields, rugby pitches, cricket pitches. Nothing extraordinary to people who didn't know what was there once upon a time. A remarkable community, Calgary Estate. And she said, when I come here, when I think of coming here, my spirit is renewed. And she began to cry. She got incredibly emotional. She said, it takes me back to our arrival. And she said one of the simplest things that she remembered was walking along a country lane here. And there was a gentleman with a hat on, with a pipe in his mouth, and he was digging his garden, his front garden. And as Minnie walked past with her friends, he looked up at them, he paused from his digging, he took his hat off and he said to them, Good morning, what a lovely day. He put his hat back on. Minnie said that meant more than anything to her and to the others with her. Nobody had shown them such dignity in five years and longer. They, they simply weren't used to this. So this light that they emerged into from the darkness of the Holocaust of the concentration camps wasn't just the landscape. It was the people who were living around them at Calgarth Estate. The Windermere children drama was, was wonderful to be involved in. We were involved in it for three years. We were the primary resource, as they say. And the writer Simon Block and Wall to Wall, the BBC Warner Brothers, did a fantastic job. There was just such a huge amount of material to use to turn into an hour and a half drama. 
But one thing sadly had to be pushed to one side, simply through necessity of fitting up a huge story into 90 minutes. And that was the people who lived on Cargo of the State. One of the carers who was brought to Windermere, the Lake District, from London, was somebody called Marie Paneth. She was part of the psychiatric team who came to help the children in case they needed help. And Marie wrote a book, which we'll be publishing soon. We uncovered it in, in the US, a remarkable book. And in the book, she describes a moment where the children have emerged from the hostels for the very first time into Calgarth Estate. Had local people around as well. And immediately, conversations struck up. Conversations, laughter, joking. There had been concerns. How would we, these locals react to these 300 children coming? You know, how, how would that work? And she said in her own words, we need not have worried. Such was the impact of this local community on these children that one of the Jewish children took Marie to one side and said, who are these people? And Marie had to explain to them. And Marie explained and said, these are not Jewish people who are welcoming you, who are being friendly to you. These are just ordinary working class British people. And the child replied, these are good people. This is a good country. Be the light in the darkness. It's an incredible lesson. I've learned so much over my 15 years and longer of working with these children. And I know the, the, the fondness, the love, the affection they have for Windermere. Or as my dear friend Sam Lasky has said, Wondermere. They were saying this in 1947. So this was hardly hindsight. They were saying it in 1947 and they were saying it still, as they do now in 2020. It's a light that has remained bright for them after the darkness of the Holocaust. And that light was not only the landscape, the mountains, the lakes. As Arek said, we had a wonderful time. Friend Sam Lasky has said we used to take blankets, lay them in the fells and sleep in the open airs under the stars. And I said, it was just the liberation, the freedom. But it was also the people. As my dear friend Maya Hirsch said, for the first time in many, many years, we were shown dignity. So when they say paradise, paradise to them is the entire package. It's the package of arriving in Westmoreland, in the Lake District, near Windermere. One of them, many years later, he became known as Coppel Kendall. His real name was Candle Cooker, Coppel Candle Cooker. But Coppel, Many years later in London, wanted to change his name so people could understand it better. And he decided on the name Kendall because he said, he remembered it from the Lay District, and he said it was rather a grand name. It felt rather proper. That's the impact that this area had on them after years and years in the camps. These 300 youngsters had been in Auschwitz, Buchenwald, Wodge Ghetto, Warsaw Ghetto, you name it, there is a connection somewhere amongst them for some of the horror sites of the Holocaust. That includes where their families were murdered. So their arrival here was, as they say, the beginning of a new life. 
So I'd encourage everybody, take your lead from what happened here in the Lake District. These children arrived into a place feeling totally uncertain, not knowing what the future held for them. They'd been liberated, they'd come to the United Kingdom, they'd come to England, but what next? And their welcome and the light that shone here set them on a new journey. There were, there were struggles ahead for them, of course there were, but the rock solid foundations were built here, the light was here. So I'd urge you all, be someone's light in the darkness. Because you know what? In 75 years time, people may still be talking about the moment they met that one person who was their light in the darkness. Thank you. Many thanks from all of us, Trevor, for sharing the work that you do. It's really helped us to think about the theme for today and reinforced the need to commit to help create positive life experiences through supporting each other and encourage us to be the light in the darkness. It also reminds us of sharing history from generation to generation and celebrate what good can be created and evolve from what was originally an evil. I'd now like to invite pupils from the Star of the Sea Roman Catholic School to share the work they've been doing on this year's theme. Teddy Klein was a Jewish girl from Romania. We have learnt about her life and how she suffered under the Nazis. We enjoyed hearing about one of Hedy's most special possessions, which was a man that she was given for her 11th birthday. So we have decided to make a man robot about Hedy to make us remember her story. This is a photograph of Hedy on her wedding day. Hedy had a happy family and a good life in Canada. However, before that, when Hedy was only 16, she was separated from her parents by the Nazis and was forced to live and work in a concentration camp where the Jews were treated very badly and many did not survive. The symbol of the swastika was used in a bad way by the Nazis, but we have learned that it is a really holy symbol used in lots of religions. It is a sign meaning good luck in Hindi, and we thought it would be a way of showing good over bad. I am putting a star of David in the moral box to show respect for Hedy's religion. Flame. We are putting a memorial flame in the box as a sign that we will always remember the people who suffered and died in the Holocaust. We will keep the flame burning and make sure that these people are not forgotten. I wrote this poem after learning about Hedy's life. She was taken to Auschwitz. Her parents were killed by the Nazis. She was in concentration camp without friends and family. Well, her life will ever change. She made her life all right. She fled to Canada and visited schools to show her memory book. She saw the light after the darkness in her life. She made her life all right. Yes, she did. We are, we are reading books in school about racism and intolerance. We think that it is good that, that we are all different and unique. We celebrate our differences and respect everyone's beliefs, religions and opinions. Um, this is going in the box as a reminder that we need to educate children about, about this. We feel that although the Holocaust was a horrible time in our history, it's something that we shouldn't forget so we can make sure it never happens again. We can, we can all stand up for people who are being treated badly and make sure that we are the light in the darkness.
the work of the children in our schools is really so moving and I thank the children from the Star of the Sea for their presentation. I'd now like to invite a second high school, Long Benton High School, to share the, the, way, the work that they have undertaken. Hi, we are Long Benton High School Six Formers and we are honoured to be talking to you today about being the light in the darkness. We hope you learn something from this. Many Holocaust survivors feel that they can't speak out about the physical and psychological horrors that they endured during the Holocaust. However, some do, and for that we should be eternally grateful. By speaking out, it allows the next generations to understand the reality of the Holocaust be educated with the hopes of preventing things like this from happening in the future. Many have said that the re recalling this um, tragedy is the most impactful when it comes from first-hand experiences. Hi, I'm Louis. My great-granddad Heinz Lowenstein escaped Germany when he was 16 years old. They were Jewish, so of course it was urgent they escape. Heinz's mother procured him a forged Polish passport and in July 1939, Josiah Wedgwood, a Labour MP who dedicated his life to saving Jews, asked the Home Secretary to admit them both. Heinz got a plane to England on a travel visa to pass through and go to the US. His mother was meant to follow but got trapped in Europe when war broke out. She eventually ended up in America about two years later. Heinz remained in England and became a successful director. This story represents the theme of a light in the darkness because it shows how some people defied the Nazis ended up doing valiant things to escape and help others escape. Natural fear kept going with the belief that his family was still alive. His family taught him that despite all the bad things that happened to us, my parents instilled in us the value that most people are good and it is important to be kind and help others. Although his family did not survive, he managed to create a good life for himself after the war had ended. Germany, November 1938. Riot has crashed through the streets. By the end of the night, 267 synagogues will be destroyed and over 30,000 Jews incarcerated. This is crystal knocked. This terrible night led to campaigns in the British government to rescue Jewish children from the threat of future pogroms. This idea, called Kinder Transport, passed, despite Chamberlain's apprehension. Between December 1938 and September 1939, over 10,000 children were saved. The founder of Holocaust Memorial Day said, Holocaust Memorial Day allows us to remember it gives us a responsibility to work for a better, safer future for everyone. We know that Holocaust education is an effective tool to tell students and the public the importance of protecting human rights. This will help prevent racism and anti-Semitism, promoting mutual respect between people of different races, religions and cultures. In the 1940s, many survivors spoke about their experience with the phrase, never again. Never again would a genocide devastate any ethnic, national, racial or religious group. And now it's up to us. It's our responsibility to keep talking. We can talk to our families and friends and have a conversation about how horrible this time was and how lucky we are to be able to help prevent this. We must always remember this time in order to prevent it happening again. We must keep the world kind and keep talking. We all need to keep to get work together to keep shining the light so that everyone's future can be safe and so that nobody has to fear who they are. Thank you. Thank you to the pupils from Long Benton High School for their contribution, interesting and thought-provoking. I'm very pleased now to introduce the pupils of Hadrian Park Primary School with a song they have for this event. Difference between you and me. In a time full of war and peace. In a world full of hate and love. Can you do somebody wrong and make a right? You hide in the dark, you were born to survive. In a world full of hate and love. That is strange, make a difference. In a time full of noise, just listen. Cause our lives should be free, let us live it. We're placing into change, make a difference. 
in a world full of hate be alive somebody wrong make it right Thank you so much, Hadrian Park Primary School, for your efforts. They're really appreciated and remind us how diverse the presentations from schools are and how we look at life from many different perspectives. I'd now like to welcome our young mayor, Susie McKenzie, to say a few words. Thank you for inviting me today to talk about Holocaust Memorial Day and this year's theme of Be the Light in the Darkness. In the darkness, even a small light shines out but it needs to be nurtured to continue shining without faltering. One light alone is vulnerable, but many lights together are too strong to be extinguished. Together, they can dispel darkness completely. Light is not something that we can keep to ourselves, and when we share it, others benefit. Light comes from many different sources. Everyone has different talents and capabilities. But what is most important is the commitment we all make to fighting hate, fear, and prejudice when we encounter it. I ask that we all light the way with tolerance and kindness to others. I would like to read you a 2004 poem by Cheryl Case Hardiff called Let Me Be Your Light. When your days are long and weary and your mind is not at peace, when you think your life is over and your troubles will not cease, let me be your light, let me be your beacon in the night. If you hold on tight, everything will be all right. When your world is full of anger and the pain too much to bear, when you feel so tired and lonely that no one else will care, let me be your light. Let me be your beacon in the night. If you hold on tight, everything will be all right. Life has its challenges. Life has its woes. You will never ever know what will come or go. Just hold on tight, my friend, and pray with all your might. I will see you through the storm. Let me be your light. Thank you. Thanks to Susie for her contribution to the, today's events. And I would now like to introduce the the final presentation from students from Churchill Community College to share with us the work that they've been doing. Hello, I'm Ella Corker, an A-level English Literature, History and Geography student at Churchill Community College in Moors End. The artwork behind me has been created by some of our Year 9 art students. Finding hope within the darkness. It's not about the darkness disappearing, it is about finding your way through the darkness. At times of difficulty, loss and challenge, we sometimes can forget this and allow the darkness to take control. In Emily Dickinson's poem, We Grow Accustomed to the Dark, she reminds us to find the comfort and reassurance from the darkness and not to be afraid. We grow accustomed to the dark when light is pulled away, as when the neighbour holds up the lamp to witness her goodbye. A moment we uncertain step for newness of the night, then fit our vision to the dark and meet the road away. And so of larger darkness, those evenings on the brain, when not a moon disclose a sign or star come out within. The bravest grope a little and sometimes hit a tree, directly in the forehead, but as they learn to see, either darkness alters or something in the sight adjusts itself to midnight and life steps almost straight. Thank you, Churchill Community College. You have concluded our presentations from schools at this year's events. May we all take a moment to reflect upon our theme today, Be the Light in the Darkness. 
which we, whilst we once more listen to the choir and our song, Refuge. There's always someone standing on their own outside the crowd who looks bewildered and confused. They try to make some sense of all the jostling and their jokes, but still they don't look that I'd like to offer a very sincere thanks to the pupils for the fantastic efforts and performances that they have shared with us today. They've really, once again, done us proud. The students from North Tyneside schools are fabulous. To close today's ceremony, can I now please welcome elected mayor Norma Redfern. I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone for sharing with us today our virtual Holocaust Memorial Day commemorative event. Special thanks must go to everyone who has cont contributed today and in the preparation to make this another really memorable occasion. As always, 
The HMD event is the result of many months of planning. On behalf of the Council, I would like to thank the members of the HMD Working Group whose efforts to help to make today such a thoughtful and thought-provoking experience. Let us remember to share the stories we've heard and to do our best to ensure these kinds of atrocities never happen again. Let us make our personal commitment to supporting the efforts of those who are left to rebuild the lives of the victims of genocide, intolerance and prejudice. I would like to invite each of you to join with me in now to light a candle and reflect on all we've heard today. Thank you.